anybody came to give yourself away? I give so you can use me. I give. Revelations chapter 2, beginning at verse number 1. Revelations chapter 2, beginning at verse number 1. I want to read it in the King James Version, then turn around and read it in the New Living Translation. Amen. Father, it's preaching time. Hide me behind thy old rugged cross so your people don't see me, but that they see you. Do it again, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Revelation chapter 2 in the King James Version. And then I'm going to read it from the New Living Translation. The King James Version, it says, Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things says he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks, I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience and how thou cannot bear them which are evil and thou hast tried them which say that they are apostles and are not and hast found them liars and has borne and has patience and for my name's sake has labored and has not fainted. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of his place. Y'all notice it says, his place. Except thou repent. But this thou hast, that thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. He that have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Amen. I went to my office to get my phone. I forgot it. Now listen to what it says in the New Living Translation. Write this letter to the angel of the church at, in Ephesus. This is the message from whom the one who holds the seven stars in his right hand, the one who walketh among the seven golden lampsticks. I know all the things you do. I have seen your hard work, your patience, endurance, I know you don't tolerate evil people. You have examined the claims of those who say they are apostles but are not. You have discovered that they are liars. You have patiently suffered for me without quitting. But I have this complaint against you. You don't love me or each other as you did at first. Look how far you have fallen. Turn back to me and do the works you did at first. If you don't repent, I will come and remove your lampstand from its place among the churches. But this is your favor. You hate the evil deeds of the Nicolaitans just as I do. Anyone with ears to hear must listen to the Spirit and understand what he is saying to the churches. To everyone who is victorious, I will give fruit from the tree of life in the paradise of God. And I just want to talk about for the next little while going back to your first love. Going back to your first love. My brothers and sisters, here we have the apostle by the name of John. John had been exiled on the island of Patmos because there were some anti-Christians who didn't want to hear about Jesus. Y'all got time? 
John's whole purpose for writing to the seven churches in Asia was that all believers would understand their identity and the house of faith. Now you got to realize that only the first two chapters of the book of Revelations came to pass. The rest are what John is writing that's going to come when Jesus comes. That's why a lot of us are scared to read the book of Revelation it is because it is the unveiling of what's going to happen when Jesus comes. Okay, because y'all still looking at me. John it really was on the island of Patmos. He was on the island of Patmos on the Lord's day in the spirit of the Lord and he heard a voice behind him that sounded like a trumpet and he fell down as a dead man and God said to John, get up and start right. I want you to write to seven churches, to the seven angels, which are the pastor who holds the candle or the lampstand. I need you to write to those seven churches because I got a problem with what's going on in those churches. The first church is the church at Ephesus. You, you know Ephesus. Those of you who came to Bible study, I ain't come to slap you in your face. I ain't come to step on your toes. I just came to get you. You understood what we were in, in Bible study in 1 Corinthians chapter 16 that Paul was writing to the church at Ephesus while he was in Corinth and he told them, look, I got some better churches. I got better opportunities that's waiting on me, but I'm not going to leave you because the adversary will come back behind and mess up everything I taught you but you got to wait till young Timothy get here and when Timothy get here then I can go to the, my next missionary journey because I trust Timothy enough that he's going to teach you what is right I wish y'all would talk to me John has to go back and write to the church at Ephesus, the same church that Paul had planted, the same church that Timothy had pastored. John had to come back and say, look, God loves you, but you left your first love. Uh, you, you, you remember when you first got in love? I ain't talking about with your boo. I'm talking about with the church. Couldn't nobody beat you coming to church you got ready for church before he was even church on Thursday you already laid out what you were going to wear to church but the problem that John and Paul had with the church at Ephesus it wasn't with the first generation it was the second generation you know you and your kids see when I was growing up I didn't have a choice whether I was going to church. I, I know it's tight, but it sure is right. And that's the problem with the church. You give your kids choices, but you don't give them a choice whether they're going to school. Come on, talk to me if you can. It, 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 we got to get to the place where if we want God to bless us, we can't let our loved ones lay in the bed while we at church. How is God going to bless your house when your house is divided? The Bible says a divided house can't stand. Now you can be divided whether you Georgia or Alabama. You can be divided whether you Auburn or whether you uh, Alabama. You can be divided whether you are uh, Miles or Alabama Hornets. You can be divided that way. But when it comes to serving the Lord, as for me and my house, we going to serve the Lord. If you can get up and go to school, you can get up and go to church. If you go to the party on Friday night, if you go to the club, then you can get yourself up and come to church. And church ain't never hurt nobody. I, I know you said it just like me. I can't stand going to church. When I get grown, I ain't coming to church. But look at you. You may have been out there in the world, but you find yourself coming back to the church because the Bible says train up a child in the way that he should go. And when they're old, they won't depart. They, 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 they may do some foolish things but they make their way back to church they, they may not have on the clothes that you want them to have on but they'll make their way back to church because they remember that God promised to meet me at the house
house of prayer. It's right here. It's right here. Ephesus was the capital of Asia Minor. This was the city where all the trades came in through land, throughout sea. But they got like us, they start smelling themselves. Because they, be, they was the big city. They were all that. They, that. Thank you. They were doing good. That every man thought what he was doing was right in his own eyes. And they started following the Nicolaitans. The Nicolaitans is just like the people of Baal. They're like the Bamalites. They, they, they thought what, whatever they did was right because sin is fun. See how quiet you get? Because cause, cause sin, if sin wasn't fun, you wouldn't keep doing it. Because I don't know nobody who's going to keep going to the club if they ain't having a good time. I don't know nobody who's going to keep drinking if they don't make them feel good. I don't know nobody who's going to keep on smoking if they ain't nobody talking. I don't know anybody who fellowship just to be fellowship. They took on the mindset of the Nicolaitans and began to sin and sin instead of the, the church influencing the community, the community started influencing the church. And that's our job, baby Baba, is to make sure that we influence the community and not the community influence us. Okay, because y'all still looking at me. Y'all still looking at me. Uh, let, let's deal with the text because y'all looking at me in that tone. John is writing to the church at Ephesus and he's saying, look, God loves you, but he got one problem against you. You left your first love. There was a time, uh, couldn't nobody outshout you. Now you got some letters behind your name change your zip code you don't want to shout you just come to church and pack there was a time that could nobody out sing you could nobody out praise you now you come to church saying it don't take all that God said well if you don't do it I got some rocks that are cry out for me and I don't know about you but I don't want no rocks crying out for me so every time he wakes me up I gotta tell him thank you every time he brings me from point A to point B I gotta tell him thank you is there anybody in here that says I'm not gonna get away from my first love I'm, 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 learning. I'm, learning. I'm learning I'm learning I'm learning uh there was a time uh, when I moved from Michigan to Alabama I had learned this the hard way I would pay for my own flight to go back home to preach my pastor had to pull me over to the side he says you, you, you love preaching I know that's your first love that's your passion but it's also your occupation sneaking in your back door you love it that God called you from, from being working a regular job to being a full time messenger of God so you can't let people take advantage because you love preaching so much the Bible says a labor is worthy see how y'all want to talk to me uh, that, that's why that's why I, I, that video blessed me this week uh, let me tell you like uh, uh, R.A. Vernon put it this way because we say stuff like we don't have to pay folks to, to do this in the church. Why are we paying them this? Here's the difference. They can do your job, but you can't do theirs. Come here. Let me come get you. I, I work in the church. I ain't talking about y'all. I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. I'm an usher. They don't play me the usher. The difference between an usher and a musician, a musician can get off the, the instrument and go usher, but an usher can't get off the dough and go play. I ain't talking about nobody, I'm talking about what I'm talking about. They don't pay me to work the sound, but the pastor can get off the pulpit and go work the sound, but the sound can't come up here and preach. He says, you have left your first love and you're not doing what you ought to do three three little points three little points point number 
one. You left your first love of serving. Couldn't nobody beat you at serving when you first got in the church. I, but the problem is, you got church burnt out. This is why. This is why when folks join the church, uh, I try my best to shield them from the wolves because they have you doing everything if you let them, and you will get burnt out and don't have the same zeal to come to church like you used to. Now instead of it being joy to worship. You do it with an angry face. Man, we got another program at the church. I got to go usher. I got to go sing. I got to go do this. No, when you really love God, you get joy out of being a doorkeeper. You get joy out of singing. You get joy out of preaching. You get joy out of being a servant because serving the Lord will pay off after a while. They're going to tell me. Now, you done preached twice this week. You need to let somebody else preach on Sunday. No. I get joy out of preaching. Yeah, yeah I could have got somebody to preach this morning, but the, how I love preaching, I was watching the Alabama and Georgia game, and I stopped watching the game and started writing notes. What you doing? The Lord is speaking to me, and when he starts speaking, you got to start writing. I wish I had somebody who knew how to write poetry, somebody who wrote songs. You can be driving in your car and got to pull over, find a scrap piece of paper, and start a writing because once he give it to you, you got to write it because if you don't write it, it's gone. We got to get back to the joy of serving one another. It's right there. He right there. He says, he says, listen, listen. He says, there are five things that you do well. The church of Ephesus, they do well. Five things, y'all listen. They work hard. They got strong patience. They resist sin. They critically examine the, the, uh, the, the teachings of false prophets. And they suffer patiently without quitting. But you keep on leaving your first love. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. You know the Bible. You probably know the Bible better than me. But because you got church burnt out, you don't want to come to church. Uh, but guess what, baby Baba? Coming to church is only part of it because when you come to church, you give somebody else strength and then somebody else gets strength and then somebody else gets strength. That's why Paul says, let us not forget to assemble ourselves together. Y'all missed it already. I, 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 okay, come here, come here. Uh, assemble, which means to put together. Okay, okay. Uh, I like Legos. I like to build stuff with Legos. Huh. So when I'm building something with Legos, every piece has an important part. Okay, let me do it this way because y'all looking at me. Wives, help me out. Please don't leave me up here by myself. Because you, you, you go buy something from the store, says assembly required your husband look at the box don't read the instructions try to put it together and then they talking about these extra pieces no ain't nothing extra you forgot a step and, 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 and baby you ain't extra in the point every Sunday God wants you in the house of God well all I do is sit on my pew where every Sunday be on that pew all I do is this every Sunday play a part Y'all going to get mad, but I need you to catch this. I read it in two different translations, Miss Lee. God says that if y'all don't repent or get right, I'm going to remove the candlestick from y'all. So now it's only you going to catch this. If y'all don't get right, I'm going to remove the candlestick from y'all and let y'all go to hell by yourself. Y'all 
missed it. God said, if y'all don't follow Lamar DePriest Johnson, I will move him from Mount Hermon, put him somewhere else where they'll follow him if you don't repent. I, I'm not here because I want to be here. I'm here because I'm on assignment. And God says, if the church don't follow you, I got another place to put you because I'm not going to let your life go down dealing with them. See how y'all want to read the Bible? Let, let, cause, 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 cause he making that up. Let me, let me show you. Let me show you. Oh. Verse number five. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and do what? Thank you. Let me show you. Let me show you. Cause I, I'm, I'm teaching y'all in Bible study, and I know y'all, y'all done told me these Bible costs eighty and hundred dollars. Let me tell you how Matthew Henry puts it in his commentary, verse number five. For Jesus to remove thy candlestick out of his place would mean the church would cease to be an effective church. <laughs> I wish I had some help. If Jesus removed the candlestick, then the church is non-effective, which means the church loses its power. Because y'all don't want to shout with me. Just as the seven branches candlestick in the temple gave light. Just how we have lights in this sanctuary. If God decide to move the angel. It's just like somebody going to the back wall. Turning the lights out. And you're sitting in darkness. But God loves you so much. That he don't want you to be in darkness. That he'll send you somebody. That say follow me as I follow Christ. Ooh, y'all don't want to talk to me. It's tight but the show is right. Secondly. Have left not only stop serving, but you stop singing, huh. making musical sounds with your voice. He says, You're not giving me the praise that you once gave me, you're not worshiping me like you used to worship. If you can only worship God because he did something for you, that's the wrong type of God to serve. If he never does anything else for me, he's already done enough. Because what did he do? He woke me up this morning. What did he do? He kept me in my right mind. What did he do? He clothed me when I was naked. What did he do? He kept me from danger, sin, and unsafe. And if he never does anything else, he's already done enough. But you, but you got to have a God that keep on doing stuff for you. No, he ain't got to do nothing else for me. Matter of fact, I owe him too much. I, I owe him some backup praise. I owe him some backup thank you. So while I got breath in my body, let me go ahead and tell him thank you. Let me go ahead and tell him thank you. Let me go ahead and tell him thank you. Let me go ahead and tell him thank you. Because you don't know like I know what the Lord has done for Sister Marsha, if he never heals my body, he done it. If he never give me nothing else to eat, he's done enough because I've never been hungry, so I tell him thank you. I'm out of here. I'm out of here. I'm trying to, trying to get y'all out of here every Sunday about 1 o'clock. Not only have we forgot how to serve, not only have we got how to sing, but lastly, we forget how to save. Preventing wasteful things to happen. We forget that it's our job to save the lost. I don't come to church because I'm all that. I come to church because somebody's watching me and want to know if, you, if God did it for you, how can he do it for me? Uh, uh. I'm going to look this way. I get joy. I get joy every time the kids sing, whether it's first Sunday or the third Sunday. 
because when I go back and watch the DVD while I'm preaching, they're mocking me. When I'm telling y'all to say yeah there, when I'm telling you to shake your... I get joy because while they're mocking me now, one of these days, they're going to need them. I ain't the, sister Brenda, I ain't the only one that mocked the preacher. But when God showed enough, touched my heart, I ain't start playing. I ain't start mocking him. I've learned how to pray by myself. If God, here I am once again on bended knee. Okay, 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 okay. I only, only got one, one new deacon here today. So I got to pick on Jamie. Jamie, and tell, tell you and others to tell you that when we were in deacon training, I told him, don't try to pray like nobody else. Pray like yourself. I had to learn the hard way because I used to pray like them old preachers and deacons. Talking about, Lord, you've been a mother when mama gone and my mama still here. Are, are y'all with me? We, we, we praying prayers that we heard other folks pray. But oh, when he took my mama from me, I understood that he'll be a mama when mama go. Come on, talk to me. I, I ain't never been hungry. So why I'm talking about God when I didn't have nothing? No, I've already had. But I can tell you one thing. When I was laying on ICU, they didn't know if I was going to make it. I know he's a healer. When cancer came back twice in the back of my head, I know that he's a healer. Ain't nobody talking to me. So no, I ain't never been hungry, but I know he's a healer. Is there anybody other than me that know he's a healer? So we got to get back to our first love. We can't come to church having regular church. He says, I got one problem I got with you. You're faithful. You don't quit. But you left your first love. And God wants us to come back to our first love. So if you've been singing in the choir, going back to your first love. Because if you don't use it, you're going to lose it. If you used to be an usher, going back to being the doorkeeper. If you used to be a nurse, going back to being the nurse. Whatever you used to do in the house of God, I know it burnt you out. I know they put pressure on you, but you going back because God wants you to come back to your first love. And that's why I tell folks all the time, I don't care how tired I am, if I can just make it to the pulpit. If he give me breath and, and, and give me the right strength to stand up here, that I don't care how tired I am, I got to tell somebody that there's a man from Galilee. I wish I had some help in here. Any, anybody know that there's a man from Galilee? If you're in sin, he'll set you free. Do you know him? There's a man going around giving sight to the blind. There's a man going around healing bodies. There's a man going around. Do you know him? I, I know, I know, I know. Y'all been saying, Reverend, you ain't took a vacation since you've been here. You ain't missed a Sunday since you've been here. But I don't care about that. This is just as so long as I can get to the pulpit and tell somebody one Friday on a hill called Calvary. Is there anybody here know he died? But early Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hands. And that same power that he got up with is the same power that gives me strength from day to day. Is there anybody here know you got power to help you walk right? Know you got power to help you talk right? Do me a favor. Don't touch your neighbor. But just look at them and tell them I got power. I got power. I got power. And if you want this power, you got to get connected with Jesus. Is there anybody here that's falling in love with Jesus? Is there anybody here that's in love with a man named Jesus? Sire. Sire. Ah, 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 yeah. 